The spookiest season of the year is just around the corner. Many of you may tune into your favorite horror classics on one of those chilly October evenings. Perhaps one of your favorites is a universal monster flick such as Frankenstein, The Mummy, or The Wolfman. These characters are nothing without their iconic looks. The mummy's withered and lined face, the long-faced and pieced-together look of Frankenstein's monster. Even the Wolfman's fanged and fearsome face has haunted the minds of moviegoers since their first outings back in the 30s and 40s. But how did these iconic characters come about in these classic looks? One man had a lot to do with their creation, a man not familiar to the general public. Today on Culturally Speaking, I am talking about none other than Jack Pierce. Born as Janice Pakala in 1884, Janice immigrated to America from his home country of Greece at the turn of the century. At first, the young Janus tried to make his mark in the world in the field of baseball. Having achieved some minor success in the Midwest, Janus moved to California to make it into the big leagues. Having not been fit to make it big in baseball, the young Janus turned his eyes to the developing movie industry arising in sunny California. At first, he found roles as bit characters and stunt doubles in the quickly growing Universal Studio. Seeing no future in front of the camera, Janus, now called Jack Pierce, switched his attention to behind the camera. Getting involved in the production aspects of the movies, Jack quickly got jobs involving the application of makeup for movie actors. While Carl Lumley Jr. took over the head of Universal Studios and started producing movie remakes of classic horror novels, Jack's skills finally got to shine. His first big involvement was in 1931's Dracula. Unfortunately, Jack didn't get a big opportunity to show his skills in the picture. Bela Lugosi, who played the titular character, refused to have someone else apply his makeup, a trait he had inherited from his time on stage. Jack was able to contribute to the general style of Dracula and the movie proved to be a smash hit. Lemley Jr. wanted a follow-up and that's where the 1931's Frankenstein comes into play. Frankenstein is arguably Pierce's most famous work. Collaborating with his favorite canvas, Boris Karloff, Jack was able to create an iconic piece of monster makeup. The monster's large, square, and stitched and bolted together head is an iconic look in a horror cinema. Frankenstein certified Pierce's skill as a makeup artist. It took hours of grueling application for Pierce to apply the makeup to Karloff's face and hands. The studio makeup back then was highly toxic, so it proved both Karloff and Pierce's willingness to bring their vision of Frankenstein's monster to life. Pierce would go on to collaborate with Karloff again in 1932's The Mummy. Pierce once again created an iconic monster look, even though this one was only seen at the end of the film. Nonetheless, it was still impressive. Unlike Frankenstein's monster, Karloff had to endure a full body transformation. Fortunately, this was only for a handful of scenes. While the actual mummy was only in a few scenes, another Pierce creation appeared throughout the film. Ardath Bay, also played by Karloff, was less complex compared to the Frankenstein's monster or the actual mummy. Yet it was still an impressive piece of makeup that Pierce applied to create the Ardath Bay character. The lined and contoured face of Ardath Bay brought out the sinister and mysterious aspects of the character. Pierce's next famous creation would arrive in 1935's The Bride of Frankenstein. While also only appearing in a handful of scenes, the titular bride also sported an iconic look. The electric puffy hair running with black and white streaks is instantly recognizable. It is not easy to make something instantly recognizable, even to those who might not be instantly familiar with the source material, but Jack Pierce did so and continued to do so. Jack's next big project was 1941's The Wolfman. Working his time with the star Lon Chaney, who did not like Pierce's work in the lengthy makeup application process, Pierce still produced another iconic monster. Based on an unused concept for a potential Boris Karloff werewolf flick, the wolf man was more man than wolf. Still, it crossed over into the uncanny valley of being between the human and the inhuman. Creating an unusual sense of horror and unease, this wolf man appearance is still iconic to this day. 
the look being carried over into the 1985 comedy Teen Wolf, and most recently in the 2022 Marvel Studios television film Werewolf by Night, once again Jack Pierce created another instantly iconic cinematic monster look. Jack's last big work came in the 1943 adaptation of The Phantom of the Opera. Starring Claude Rains, this look is perhaps not as iconic as a 1925 silent era depiction of the character, starring Lon Chaney, but it still holds cultural relevance. The blank, porcelain mask hides the hideously burnt face of the Phantom in voices not only the horror, but also the pride of this tragic character. The mask that Pierce designed invokes traditional theater masks, and the burnt and maimed face is still unsettling yet less so than the original design Pierce had planned, but had been unable to use, due to the studio fearing that it would be too unsettling. The look Pierce crafted for this vision of the Phantom can be seen in later adaptations of the work, such as the 1984 one starring Robert England and the 2004 one starring Gerard Butler. Pierce's career would falter after World War II. His original studio merged with another one, but he was let go. Pierce would find his work as a makeup artist and supervisor in low-budget studios, but he would die in obscurity in 1968. However, Jack Pierce's much-deserved praise would arrive post-mortem with the re-interest of his work. A star in Hollywood Boulevard has been proposed for the makeup genius and it is well-deserved. Jack Pierce helped create some of the most iconic and horrifying monsters in Hollywood's golden age. His skill with makeup and crafting a look should be noted as without him, some of the most iconic horror characters would not be the same. So remember when you're watching your favorite classic horror movie, the skill and care that goes into crafting those iconic characters. Not just through acting and writing, but also through the minute details of the makeup and costuming. After all, film is a visual medium, and we should praise those who add so much to those visuals. Thank you, have a good night, and continue to culture on. To entertain you in a giant screen with the new colorful motion pictures you've been hearing about and reading about. And you can be sure it's the best show in town. Your continued patronage is very, very welcome.